Well, I'd say that, that one of the things that diagnosis of MS is a bit of a wake-up call that one really has to put some effort into maintaining wellness. This is often young people who have taken their health for, for granted and now are faced with the disease, but it doesn't mean you can't be a well person with MS. It's, I, I like to think pe people with MS, not, not to think of themselves as sick, but as a well person living with MS and you know, trying to incorporate exercise into your life is going to help keep you that way. What tends to happen in any population, if you are inactive, people will decondition. When you have a neurological disorder, um, the people feel that they can't be active. They feel weak. So when they are active, they feel weaker or more tired. So they restrict their activities and they become even more deconditioned. So it's like an additional deconditioning to just being a healthy, inactive person. Well, I, I think that exercise needs to be considered as a, as a part of the overall management of the disease. Uh, we can combine it with disease-modifying therapy, which both of which are then aimed at trying to um, prevent worsening of disease or prevent consequences of worsening of disease. I think that's an important concept. And along with that, other health wellness um, measures that people can take on their own also need to be included in that, such as discontinuing smoking, eating a healthy diet, living a healthy lifestyle with as regular of hours as they can. Just as exercise is important for the general population, it is also extremely important for those with MS. We are understanding that exercise should be incorporated in the daily life of everyone, including people that have multiple sclerosis, because it has a lot of health benefits. Um, some that we're a little unclear of. We don't know yet whether it actually benefits the immune system in multiple sclerosis, but there's a suggestion that that might be the case. We always thought that MS is a demyelinating inflammatory disease of the central nervous system, and for sure it is. In multiple sclerosis, we think there is an imbalance between the bad guys and the good guys, where the bad guys are called Th1 cells and the good guys are called Th2 cells. And what happens is that with exercise, eventually we can decrease the Th1 cells, so the bad guys, and increase a little bit the Th2 cells. In the last few years, there are evidences that now MS is also a neurodegenerative disease. So we have degeneration of those nerve fibers that are transmitting the signal through the central nervous system. And that, that's where the concept of neuroprotection comes, is how we can save these fibers from this neurodegenerative process. More research is needed on that side and to see whether or not there is a way to increase this potential of exercise as neuroprotectant. Strength and balance training can improve the function of people with multiple sclerosis. The other thing is that exercise can be a therapy to help people recover from relapses. Not only are we trying to work at maximizing our, our strength, um, but when there's been a setback, the work of exercise is often important to get back to where you were before. Exercise will help people with MS maintain their day-to-day -day function from a cardiovascular perspective. Hopefully, they, if they are active, they experience less shortness of breath, less fatigue, um, again, promotes circulation. Uh, from a day-to-day -day function, exercise can help promote joint lubrication. Um, exercise and physiotherapy will promote um, your, your muscle tone, your control, uh, it actually, you get some release of endorphins so you feel good and you can prevent that additional deconditioning from occurring which allows you to be more um, functional during the day, have more energy and actually sort of sustain a level. It will often help with um, regulating sleep patterns, providing a better rest um, at night and so people have more energy than in the morning to get up and do the day-to-day -day activities that they That's need to it. do. Right One of the primary the reasons for right people being unable to maintain working for a living is that fatigue interferes significantly with that. And that is one of the two primary reasons that people leave their work. And so if we can help to minimize fatigue levels, help them to persevere and endure longer, they will likely continue to work for a longer period of time. I don't know, I just feel so 
energized inside. My balance has improved a little bit. And if, uh, if I miss two or three weeks, I can tell my balance is a lot worse. An easy way to get back into a group situation, talking with people, socializing a little bit, and you get, of course, you know, uh, some tremendous health benefits from it as well. Coming here has basically brought me to uh, be with other people with MS. Uh, we share a lot of uh, fun times, a lot of stories about MS, and uh, basically get a bit of exercise in to keep our muscles in tone. Well, I've, uh, I think it's helped me with probably stress management, more of that. As I got into it, I found, hey, like this burning's gone, this pain's kind of leaving, and um, it did a lot for your self-esteem. I was told by my doctor that if I didn't do something soon, that I was going to end up in a wheelchair and probably not even necessarily. So I started working out four years ago. Um, I go three times a week. It's a group of people that have MS and other neurological problems. Um, so we go to the gym and we work out on the equipment for an hour at a time and then for half an hour afterwards we stretch. And that has made an incredible difference in, in my gait, in my energy levels, you know, all around. It's made a big difference. There is also some evidence that exercise can be beneficial for a person with more severe MS. When a person has MS, there are certain considerations that must be taken into account when starting or expanding an exercise program. As with any exercise program, the first thing to do is check with a medical professional, and in the case of MS, with your neurologists. The uniqueness of each individual and their specific manifestation of MS make generalizations difficult. However, there are some general guidelines to follow when undertaking an exercise program. People with multiple sclerosis need to read their body. And when I say you need to get exercise, you need to do what you can do and recognize that your limits may be a little bit different than they were before. Um, but they aren't always. I have patients that have run marathons and so MS doesn't have to be a limit on people. We know that um, heat often makes MS symptoms worse. It doesn't cause relapses, so if people are exercising and their vision blurs, that doesn't mean that they're causing themselves injury. It means that when their body is warmer, the nerves don't conduct as well and their vision's a little bit blurred or their feet may become a little bit numb. That will clear as your body temperature goes down. Listen to your body. And if, if your body's telling you you need to rest, then you need to rest. And if your body says, oh, okay, you're feeling a little bit better, then, then try something and, and, and sort of monitor it. See how you feel. If, if it knocks you for a loop, then you've obviously done too much for what you're ready for at that time. And a lot of um, times people get a little bit nervous about exercise because, as you know, elevation in body temperature can sometimes cause a transient uh, reappearance of symptoms. And um, some people get scared off exercise because they notice that, that they, when they get hot exercising, their vision may blur in the eye that was affected by optic neuritis, or their sensory symptoms may come back, but that does not cause damage to the nervous system. And that's important to know, so they don't have to be afraid of exercise. And there's things that they can do to help prevent that from happening, such as staying cool during exercise. So when recommending exercise specifically for someone with MS, um, I always ask them to respect their levels of fatigue. The, the respect piece is that some people literally want to push through fatigue. They think no pain, no gain. I don't believe in that at all. Um, fatigue for a population such as MS comes in a different form than fatigue would for a healthy person. For example, your leg becomes heavy it feels stiff, it doesn't listen to you, you are at more risk of injuring yourself or falling. So if those are some signs, you're less coordinated, those are signs of the neurological fatigue and I really ask people to respect that, meaning that they can rest. The other thing is cooling, making sure that you're either exercising in a cool environment 
um, whether some people have basements and they say that's the best place for them to choose to exercise. Some people go to an air conditioned gym. Pre-cooling is another option. People will often put a cool pack just around the back of their neck or some people wear those vests. Um, just ensuring that they maintain a, a good temperature so that they don't have the additional effects of heat on, on their nervous system. Uh, many times people start into an exercise program at too advanced a level for where they're at and so they tend to give it up easily. Um, I've often started telling people, you know, start doing a little bit. Even if you can start five, ten minutes a day, if that is all that you're capable of, at least starting there and doing that.